In 2012, Gordon Ramsay dropped by Yanni's, a family-run Greek restaurant located near Seattle. At first, Yanni's was thriving, but as the years rolled on, things started going downhill. Chef Peter is stubborn and quick to anger, blaming everyone but himself. The restaurant hasn't managed to stay in step with the changes happening in its neighborhood either. As such, Peter is struggling with the realization that he needs to change his cooking style and restaurant approach to keep up. Excuse me. Cut the fucking crop. I don't have to change. In the kitchen with him is his daughter, Elise. She's got that same stubborn streak as her father. And let's just say, it's not really helping the situation. I don't think the man likes garlic. Don't tell him to get the fuck out of a Greek restaurant. Handling the front of house is sister, Taria but she's super sensitive and the stress is just too much for her. She's often in tears, really upset about the quality of food she has to serve. <sighs> what now? Everything was too garlicky. <laughs> but the family hardly notices her stress, showing little empathy for her problems. <sighs> the task of uniting the family now falls to the mother, Karen. But with a name like Karen, let's hope she's more about fixing problems than finding new ones to complain about. The family is drowning in unpaid bills, pushing them to the brink of a meltdown. There's only one thing that unites these three women, their conclusion. There are so many things wrong with this restaurant, but the main problem, Peter doesn't change. But as always, Peter knows better. These are foods I grew up with. What am I supposed to change? In Peter's view, it's still the rest of the world that's the problem. If Yanni's is to survive, something's got to give. My father is very stubborn, and he needs an Englishman to give him a good kick in the ass. And help is at hand. Here is proud Scotsman Gordon Ramsay striding purposely through the rain to the rescue. Peter has asked for a one-to-one -one meeting before Gordon inspects the restaurant. At a coffee shop, where else? It's Seattle. Peter primes his visitor and gets his version of the story out first. Yoni's was established by Peter's father back in 1984. He turned it into a thriving restaurant throughout the 80s and 90s. However, after his father passed in 2007, Peter stepped in to take control. Sadly, not long after he took over, things began to go downhill. When Peter admits they're currently losing eight to $10,000 per month, even Gordon is taken aback. When Gordon asks him what the biggest problem is, Peter blames his family's lack of focus and claims he's just too soft on them. What are you like as a boss? I'm not uh, strong enough, I think. I give in. Now the important question. How does he rate his food? Peter modestly explains, if it's not a 10, then it's a 9. We all know that whenever the owner of a failing restaurant tells Gordon that he rates his food 9 out of 10, it's not going to end well. But for now, Gordon thanks him for being open and honest. It's time to enter the restaurant to sample the menu. After a warm welcome from Karen, the ladies all sit down to vent. Food and decor are outdated. They blame Peter, who won't listen and won't change. Time for Gordon to spill the beans. He relays what their father has said about them. Do what you want, and he's too easy on you guys. <laughs> too easy. You know, too lax. No. no. No? No, never. Gordon, noticing their shocked expressions, senses that something's off. He decides to call Peter over to join the conversation and confronts him about the situation. The family jumps in, each trying to express their perspective and get their points across. We're the ones asking for change. Decor. Everything. Throw away the menu. Start fresh. But Peter is not moving. I couldn't. Since he can't get through to Peter, Gordon decides to try the food out for himself to get a first-hand picture. First, shock at the thick, multi-page menu with nine daily specials that never change. Still, a decision needs to be made. Intrigued and a bit surprised, he opts for the pumpkin hummus, something he's never seen in a Greek restaurant before. Along with that, he chooses a moussaka and a euro. The first dish, the pumpkin hummus, arrives. Wow, look at this baby. Okay. But whose recipe is this? This is Peter's. After just one mouthful, Gordon declares that it's hideous. Karen whisks it away before things get worse. Back in the kitchen, she reports back that there's too much garlic and oil. That feedback isn't well received. Time to move on to the moussaka. Elise notes this one as a 10, perhaps no surprise, as it's her specialty. At first glance, the moussaka seems promising. Gordon looks like he might actually enjoy the dish. He starts digging in with a certain degree of enthusiasm, but it's best not to get too excited just yet. The meat turns out to be oddly sweet. The eggplant is undercooked and has bitter taste. 
and true to a classic Ramsey menu tasting scenario, it's swimming in oil. Moussaka. Moussaka. Back in the kitchen, Peter is not in the mood for Karen's constructive feedback. You want to go sit with him and chit chat how to fucking criticize my food? Get out of my kitchen. On to the house hero. Surely that can't go wrong. But Karen's learned her lesson. She places a plate in front of Gordon and hastily retreats before he asks her to agree with him about anything. For some reason, Taria ventures front of house at this point, interrupting Chef Ramsay as he starts his prodding with a fork routine. Oh God, she's crying over there. It's tough. I know it's tough, I'm sorry. Gordon reassures her that he wants to fix things. A quick shout out here for a show of empathy and understanding. It's the first time we've seen anyone say a kind word to this poor distressed girl. It just goes to prove what we already knew. Under that tough exterior, Chef Ramsay is really a decent human being. Still, he has to tell it like it is. And his verdict is that the only item that scores 10 out of 10 so far is the pita bread. Taria optimistically says she hopes he enjoys this one. But surely, she realizes that it's a mistake to get those hopes too high. Come on, seriously? It looks like a plate full of puke. It's time for the debrief. Chef Ramsay assembles the family for a wake-up call. First, a lecture on the appropriate uses of pumpkin, and in his opinion, hummus is not one of them. Elise's stubbornness starts to show. She pushes back on his accusation that the eggplant in her moussaka was less than perfect. Undercooked? When it's completely white in the center, it's not cooked long enough. I disagree. Despite her bad attitude, Gordon sticks to his guns. If they want someone to blow smoke up their ass, they've got the wrong man. And when he asks Peter if he's ever thought about changing, all he gets is defensiveness. Gordon has clearly had enough for now and needs a break. He leaves, promising he'll be back for the evening service. The family tension is through the roof, and Elise blames Gordon. She's also getting tired of Taria crying all the time. Stop crying! Karen tries to be the voice of reason in this fractured family, but will Peter listen to her for once? She reminds him that they've invested everything. They're at risk of losing it all because Peter won't change his menu or his ways of running a restaurant. It's gonna be a long night. And for some reason, we can already feel it's only gonna get worse. Gordon is back to check out the dinner service to focus on how the kitchen operates. And predictably, chaos ensues. Peter yells in frustration. And as fast as the plates get sent out, they come flying back with complaints from customers. Tension is mounting to a fever pitch in the kitchen. So naturally, Chef Ramsay decides this is the perfect moment to inspect the walk-in fridges. What a mess. It's sticky, it stinks, and it's disgusting. The revelations keep coming. Gordon finds slimy vegetables, raw meat stored next to cooked meat, and trays of rotting chicken. Even though they were well aware of when the Kitchen Nightmares crew would be arriving to film the episode, they still didn't make the effort to clean their walk-ins or get rid of the spoiled food. He invites Peter to sniff something revolting. Peter is surprised and at least a little concerned about the boiled beef encrusted with mold. Elise admits it smells bad, but shrugs it off. So beef stew with mold on top. Have you touched that chicken? That was the fat of the beef. Don't you dare. Don't you fucking dare. Back in the restaurant, Taria has paused her sobbing and adopted a show must go on attitude. She's gamely doing her best to entertain the customers with a flamboyant display of showmanship. Opa! The flaming cheese. Gordon continues showing the evidence of unlabeled, rotten food. He's disgusted that no one cares enough to throw it out, and they're all in denial. While he yells that the old meat will contaminate even the fresh food, Elise is disinterested. She just wants to get back to her cooking. No, you can't. I'm not going to let you cook anymore. Yeah, that's right. What about Peter during all this? So far, he's been unusually quiet. But that's about to end with a mega meltdown because, of course, none of this is his fault. How could the chef be expected to know what's in his own fridges? I've babysit you like kids, and you still fuck me. If I want to babysit, I go babysit my granddaughter. She's more fun than you guys. Peter doesn't know it at that point, but his wish to spend more time with his granddaughter is soon going to become a reality. Totally fed up, Peter throws in the towel and declares the kitchen closed for the night. He tells Karen and Taria to break the news to the customers still waiting. No dinner tonight, folks. The next day, the family returns to the restaurant where Chef Ramsay awaits. Peter explains that in reality, the fridges weren't as bad as Gordon made them out to be. Gordon can't believe what he's hearing. 
Elise rolls her eyes. Finally, Karen's heard enough of the denial. No, but it's our fault and we make up all these excuses. Stop the excuses. So can we put that in the past and just walk forward? Karen's actually growing on me. I kind of regret cracking those jokes about her name earlier. But even her heartfelt efforts aren't making a dent. Peter's still stubbornly claiming all the food was fresh. Chef Ramsay's had enough. He lays down the law. If Peter won't listen and won't change, he's out. It's do or die time. Ramsay's not about to waste more time on someone so deep in denial. Finally, Peter gets it. His tough exterior breaks down, just like the crust on a greasy moussaka. I need help for improvement. Help us. Show us the way. There's a sense of unity in the family. Peter is open to change and moving forward. He even apologizes for his outbursts as a way of coping with stress. That's enough to bring tough girl Elise to tears. Now it's time to get to work. The family's first big task, slimming down the menu. They need to cut out all the dishes that aren't selling, which means shrinking that enormous menu to just a page or two. Peter, at first, falls back into his old, stubborn ways, reluctant to make changes to the menu he's had for the past 29 years. But a moment of clarity hits when he realizes he hasn't updated anything, and it's all been the same. He finally gives in, and together, they trim down the menu from a hefty 71 items to a more manageable 21 that everyone is happy with. With the family finally united, Gordon's team dives into the restaurant makeover, working non-stop all night. The next morning arrives, and the family enters the restaurant blindfolded. When they take off their masks, they're greeted with an astonishing transformation. The walls now display a stunning blue gradient. All the tacky and outdated decorations, which were as bad as that pumpkin hummus, are gone, replaced by a fresh, modern look. The announcement of new china and flatware soon arriving is the icing on the cake for Peter. Overwhelmed by the changes, he can't help but go in for a big, emotional Greek bear hug. How, how do you do my country? Let me give you the best. You're the best. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> At the relaunch service, Chef Ramsay keeps them working together as a team to prevent them from going back to their old ways. Everyone holds it together, and they all remain satisfied with each other for once. Chef Ramsay is happy that, once again, he's worked his magic. And I can't ever remember rooting for family more than this one. Before the Kitchen Nightmares episode was filmed at Yanni's in November 2012, they shared a post on their Facebook page announcing the upcoming filming at the month's end. They playfully added, pray for us, on the 28th of November, the day before the episode began filming, Yanni's posted the transition from a restaurant to a TV studio started yesterday, and that he had never seen so many producers before, all from LA and very nice people, getting very nervous about the whole thing, God help us. While Kitchen Nightmares was filming, a Reddit user spotted Gordon Ramsay near the 74th Street Ale House, right next door to the filming location. They mentioned Ramsay briefly stepped out of a car, yelled at the camera crew, and then quickly got back into the car. On December 2nd, the same night that Kitchen Nightmares finished their filming, Taria gave an interview to Fox 13. She expressed that the family had gained valuable insights from Chef Ramsay. She confidently stated that now, Yanni's truly reflects the vibe of their neighborhood. On December 6th, Yanni's announced their reopening, showcasing a refreshed decor and a lighter menu, marking a new chapter for the restaurant. In an interview with the Seattle Times, a week before the episode aired on TV, Karen gave some answers as to why the family decided to appear on Kitchen Nightmares. She said it had been 29 years since they'd opened the restaurant, and said everything had stayed the same. We still had the grapes on the wall, the wine kegs. We had stood still, and everyone had come and gone. On Friday, March 15th, 2013, the episode aired as a 13th episode of the fifth season of Kitchen Nightmares. After their episode aired, the restaurant experienced a sudden surge in popularity, with customers flooding in almost overnight. The family rode the wave of momentum initiated by Chef Ramsay, welcoming visitors and receiving postcards from fans around the globe. The family has been pretty vocal about how much they liked working with Chef Ramsay. They created a tribute section to Ramsay in their restaurant, which includes a signed menu by the famed Michelin chef himself that is proudly displayed on the wall. A few days after the episode aired, Peter posted on Yoni's Facebook page saying, The viewing party was fantastic. Now we know what the Oscars feel like. He said they have heard from people from all over the USA. The executive producer called, telling them that they got a lot of great reviews from people. Even Gordon Ramsay tweeted that he liked the show. He then went on to say, It was not hard to watch how Ramsay was bashing and arguing with me, 
but it was hard to watch how my wife was teaming up with him, both attacking me, ha ha ha. Just because he kept giving her compliments about her hair, she turned on me, hmm. Next time I want her on my side, maybe I will try giving her compliments about her hair, ha ha ha. If guys like Peter had been into complimenting hairstyles like Karen's, who knows? Maybe that style would have stuck around a bit longer. But then again, maybe it's a good thing it didn't. Some trends just don't age well, do they? Reviews post Kitchen Nightmares tend to be favorable overall for the restaurant, with this reviewer particularly praising the calamari. From the looks of it, we can see why. It looks delicious. Despite the success of their relaunch business, the family has faced other serious challenges, particularly with the least. In late March 2013, just weeks after the episode of Kitchen Nightmares aired, Elise unexpectedly vanished from her job as an assistant chef at Yanni's. More than that, she also left her family and her five-year-old daughter, who is the same granddaughter Peter mentioned on the show. The family knew that this could mean only one thing. During the episode, we didn't learn anything about her backstory as it wasn't mentioned. But it seems Elise had been struggling with drug addiction, in particular crack cocaine, since the early 2000s, while she was still attending community college. In fact, between 2006 and 2008, she had four drug-related convictions, two for third-degree theft and one for prostitution. Because of Elise's absence, Peter and Karen took on the responsibility of raising the little girl that Elise gave birth to in 2008. The father? Well, Peter and Karen are not sure and never felt comfortable pressing the matter. However, they suspect it is Markel Alexander, a known criminal with 38 prior criminal convictions, resulting from 90 bookings. Fast forward to July 2012, just five months before the Kitchen Nightmares episode was filmed, when it seems Elise had a drug relapse and things began a downward spiral. On her 28th birthday, May 31st, 2013, Elise and her companion, Alexander, lost their home. In a turn of events, they reportedly sought shelter in an apartment complex designed for seniors and the disabled in the nearby city of Shoreline. An elderly woman, acting as a good Samaritan, opened her door to them after they explained that they had just lost their residence. After the elderly woman kindly let Elise and Alexander stay in her apartment, the situation took a dark turn. She soon regretted her decision when she overheard the pair discussing selling drugs and discovered they were using crack cocaine. She asked them to leave. However, things escalated quickly. Elise started to grab her purse, and then Alexander attacked the elderly woman, even using an object passed to him by Elise, causing her extreme pain. Their elderly Good Samaritan was repaid for her kindness with a fractured eye socket and a subdural hematoma, or collection of blood on the surface of the brain. Not only that, but they didn't let her leave the apartment. Before they finally left, taking her wallet, purse, and keys, they threatened to kill her if she reported them to the police. The following day, they were both arrested, she on felony charges of unlawful imprisonment, and he charged with second-degree assault. In this video of the family from August 2013, Elise is notably absent. Swallow a spoonful of cinnamon, and we're gonna see who wins. Go! Try to swallow it. <laughs> Excuse me. I told her that, but she thought she was gonna be brave. You people are sick. Do so we get the winner? Yay! Not yet, not yet. Karen's the biggest loser. <laughs> <laughs> Idiots! <laughs> you people are the bunch of idiots. So everybody, say bye to the camera. There's a big brain one here. <laughs> bye! On December 11, 2013, exactly a year after their Kitchen Nightmares episode was filmed, the family shared an update on Yanni's Facebook page. They expressed their gratitude towards Chef Ramsay for his role in transforming their restaurant. The family highlighted his off-screen persona, describing him as a good guy, full of compassion and very informative. Following their stint on Kitchen Nightmares, Yanni's managed to maintain a streak of mostly positive reviews. This was particularly true among fans who had seen the restaurant on TV and decided to check it out for themselves. Yanni's was even proud to learn that Chef Ramsay featured a photo of their lamb shank on his Facebook page. Despite things going well for the restaurant, Elisa's legal woes continued in 2016, with a serious accusation of second-degree robbery, which the court refused to dismiss. The saga went on, 
By 2019, Elise was added again, this time for another controlled substance violation. This led to a series of court-mandated compliance reviews as part of a drug court program. By the end of 2021, in a surprising turn of events, her charges were dismissed after she seemingly met the court's stringent conditions, hinting at a new chapter in her life. Elise had embarked on a fresh start, working at a Hops and Drops branch, which even highlighted her on their Facebook page in September. Additionally, her Facebook page shows she continues to work as a sous chef at Yoni's. Let's hope her previous challenges are far behind her, and that with the backing of her family's love and support, life is treating her well. And how has the restaurant fared since Kitchen Nightmares? Well, it's still open. Peter is still at the helm. It's rated a very respectable 4.5 stars on TripAdvisor, 3.9 stars on Yelp, and 4.7 stars on Google Reviews. Peter and his family, riding on their business success, have now branched out into catering events as a side venture. It even looks like Peter has got a sense of humor about his Kitchen Nightmares days, joking that they are going to bring back the pumpkin hummus. Peter must feel pretty great seeing how well Yanni's has done. When he's not at work, he's a huge fan of the NFL, especially as Seattle Seahawks. Turns out, the whole family loves rooting for the Seahawks. There's a bit of a rumor going around that Peter might have a secret life as Mr. Bean's doppelganger. Or are people just seeing things? What's your verdict? But when it comes to memes though, this episode's focus is on Karen, specifically her signature haircut. This viewer noted that the Yoni's episode might be the first time the world was introduced to the Karen-style haircut. Who will she speak to if she's the manager, quipped one poster. Others have defended her, saying thank goodness Karen is a manager and acts the opposite of the Karen stereotype. Her name is Karen, her hair is Karen, but she's not a Karen. Who would have thought? I love this Karen. She's the most respectful and caring person on the team. Also, kind of ironic that Karen was the most sane one in the restaurant, pointed out this poster. Taria has got some online attention too, particularly for a comment about Gordon Ramsay being, as she called him, an Englishman. It seems that statement really got people talking. My father is very stubborn, and he needs an Englishman to give him a good kick in the ass. It's pretty interesting how every time an American on Kitchen Nightmares refers to Gordon Ramsay as English, it lights up the comment section. Viewers often point out that he's actually Scottish, but it's worth mentioning that Ramsay himself has identified as English on several occasions, like in the Le Bistro episode. We're both English. We're both English. Seems like it's a topic that always stirs up a bit of debate. Taria is often mentioned as one of the most beautiful waitresses to have appeared on Kitchen Nightmares. Viewers have really connected with her emotional moments on the show, and they appreciated how kindly Chef Ramsay treated her. It seems she left quite an impression. According to Taria's LinkedIn, she worked at Yanni's until 2021, when she moved to Chicago to begin work as a certified medical assistant. It's common for kitchen nightmares to end positively, but owners frequently revert to old habits. That's why it's fantastic to see a genuine, lasting success. Wishing them many more prosperous years ahead.